Mr. Nelson Nieto is an environmental engineer specialized, specializing in GIS and climate change. He is a researcher in the field of Earth Observation Technologies of the Research and Prospective Directorate of the Geographic Institute, Augustin Codesi of Colombia. He will present on a study of the mangrove forest with Earth Observation hypersectoral field data and satellite images for a better understanding of this strategic ecosystem and its relationship with ethnic communities of the Colombian Pacific region. Well, uh, first, of all, first of all, uh, I would like to thank in name of the Geographic Institute Agustin Kodasi for this opportunity. It's very important to us in the research and directorate to be able to communicate our, our findings or results or methodologies. Um, well, in timeline of talk, I like to start by mentioning that and this and this presentation would be focused on the your research we have been conducting the past in five years almost. In the general outline here, we have the Pacific region of Colombia. It's a very, very general outline. It's mainly characterized by mangrove forests and indigenous populations. It's also been is characterized by a history of violence and very being a some, um, natural regional zone in Colombia that is very difficult to traverse, to travel, to get around, to study, and to map. Um, additionally, um, is um, a climatically and uh, environmentally speaking, a very difficult zone in our country to be able to study. Three months all year round is completely covered by clouds, so it, it very it restricts uh, heavily on the available satellite images that we can use. And the in the Geographic Institute in, in charge of the national cartography is always been a big challenge to keep this area of the country up to date in cartography, in cartography and casting information. So in, in collaboration with the in scientific expedition of the in Ocean Commission of Colombia, from since 2021, we have been uh, participating in different in, expedition to study the mangrove forest. And it has started from field and spectroviometry, acquiring field data from different types of spectroviometers and high spectral field data in order to uh, characterize different spectral aspects of uh, mainly the vegetation, but in the most recent uh, expedition has been focused also in man-made structures. So uh, why, is, why is this region so important? First of all, is the mangrove forest. We know is one of the main ecosystem or main uh, subjects in, in the talk of climate change, about blue carbon, uh, about in, the adaptability to climate change, how the seniors, the communities uh, that inhabit them, and how important it is for the, the life cycle of many species that makes not just the dietary requirements of, of this community, but also the housing and um, in general to livelihood. So it's a critical and uh, a very strategic ecosystem that um, encompass in, in, in my view very well the key challenges we face in towards climate change. So um I like to focus two main um, issues of this general region in the climate change talking as food security, as I mentioned, and housing. And as, as in most of these um, coastal ecosystems, in most of the housing in, in depends on steel houses that are constructed from the very same um, materials, in, well, wood, wood from the mangrove forest. And, but for the past uh, couple of years, um, we have been noticing an increase in uh, other type of material construction. With, in this slide, we have uh, a picture of concrete and uh, different types of bricks in, that are replacing in some senses the, the construction materials in the Pacific region. And we know that in, in this type of ecosystem that is completely clouded and heavily 
in rain in, throughout the year, uh, high humidity. Uh, these materials are not ideal. Mm, the best immune response, the best adaptability are those made from the very same wood of the mar forest. But um, the over excitation of the specific uh, mangrove species that are used for uh, this construction have, uh, have led to an increase in, in this type of uh, in this change of construction. So it's, um, it's, it's an issue, a very important issue to take into account in the challenges that faces the different areas we, we are covered. And of course, for security, um, there is a, um, a very high codependence of the communities that inhabit the mangrove forest in the very same uh, wildlife that uh, constitute the requirement needs, uh, their nutritional needs. So uh, in that regard, I wanted to, um, to share this, uh, this example of a, a very interesting program or an instrument that he used in basically in the Department of Chocó, Golf of Chibuga. It's called a uh, piangimetro, a uh, piangimeter, and is the, this hard shell in mollus, uh, another tuberculosa, is one of the main um, food sources in the Pacific, not just in Colombia, but across the Pacific coast in Central and, and South America. So this is a very simple um, instrument, but it's very effective and it's, uh, has made a very big difference in how the community are managing the food resources. In this case, is uh, as I say, it's very simple. Uh, they compare the, the models, they find the pianga, and compare it in, with this red region and the red of the, of the rural. So in this in the red, they, they have, you know, they better recommend it to put it back, I mean, not harvest the, the pianga, the monadora, anara. But uh, if there is in the red zone, green, the green zone, sorry, uh, they can keep it, they can collect it or harvest. So what is uh, the point of this? That um, if they harvest the, this pianga, when it's not in the reproduction life cycle appropriate to, to procreate, uh, they are damaging the food resource. They are uh, affecting the, one of the main uh, sources of, uh, of, of food they have. So, uh, this, uh, this little simple device or instrument has made a very big impact in how the, in the community, the local community, understand the, the challenges they are facing in this, in, in this climate change impacts in their ecosystem, but also they are empowering themselves on how to uh, uh, correspond appropriately. So in this, in this regard, uh, we, we have uh, let's say try to a new focus on how we can study the mangrove forest from the air observation technologies. In this case, as I mentioned, we feed spectrogram. Basically, we go to these regions, to these areas, and in most cases, in national protected uh, zones of the country, with different devices, uh, mainly spectrogrammetries, um, uh, well, all, all, all types of accessories, in order to capture high spectral data. This has to take the data. Um, we know, um, I'm going to advance a little. Uh, we know they um, relay an information of how the um, electromagnetic spectrum uh, interacts with this, the, the observed object, right? So, as for vegetation, most people that might be attending know or are familiar with the spectral scene, the typical spectral scene of vegetation. But different regions, give us different information. So different ways in terms of how the, the, the vegetation behaves, how well are they doing, how, how old, how young are they growing, are they having any deficiency on in water absorption, in nutrients, etc., and certain types of disease. Also, this information is usually um, not just analyzed, but correlated to the variables where the physical barriers, barriers or more uh, biological data, specific data to this type of uh, surface vegetation species. So um, this uh, relation information is what is mainly the focus of air observation technologies and using satellite imagery. Uh, perhaps most, most or many of the attendants are work with or have knowledge of the NDVI, the Normal Vegetation Index, 
and how it is for almost, let's say, 50 to 40 years, like one of the basis of how well or how much we have studied land cover, land vegetation, whether for natural resources of agriculture, and how to behave, how to, um, how to, how, how we monitor this vegetation, how we can predict or estimate the behavior. And whether it be yield, whether it be health, ecosystem health, it is a wider range of what we we need to calculate. So, um, thanks to the expedition, the scientific expedition program, we aim to construct a, a bank of a field signatures, so we can extend or expand our society now to characterize in the spectrally in, in spectrally in the mangrove forest at a species level in order to contribute the into the state of knowledge of these ecosystems. So um I just to um, finish this point and um, we know maybe that um, mostly of, of this interaction of the behavior of vegetation are studied in the mid inferior region and the relation with the red in region of the spectrum. So this is a uh, and let's say um, a basic standard of work with, with the city style information. Most satellite programs or, um, or different platforms for observation include at least in images that capture or sensor that capture tears within the visible and the mean infrared. This is um, pretty much the basis for, for this type of studies. So, um, in this research, we well, we go to this, uh, these areas in the mangrove forest, we make our field campaign, we collect different spectra with the local, local communities, representatives and leaders. And uh, one of the earliest challenges is that uh, there is very little information of reference to locate the, the different species. We know, of course, the natural distribution of certain species of mangroves, red mangroves, tropical mangroves, mangroves etc. But there is not uh, a reference in shapefile to, to say, in, or covers that to say you have the certain probability that this area, this specific area, is made by a certain species. So we need to go to the field and pretty much find it with the help of the local community. From that, uh, we characterize and they capture different signatures represented in this diagram. We made different, have made different types of analysis to make certain that the final signature, spectral signature that we have collected is in fact representative of the species of, of interest. And it's, it's not limited to mangroves, we also study on other types of covers. But of course, the focus, the idea is mainly mangroves. So, from this type of data, the general data we capture for this study area. We aim to generate the end members, that is, that final signature that represents um, individually this object or target that we are interested on. In this case, um, what we are interested in is that is every single one of the, the samples is as most differentiated from each other, because this is what uh, will help us better to identify and individualize every single mangrove species. So this, uh, this is uh, pretty much the summary of these, these um, expeditions, from the, the past three expeditions from Santiago National Natural Park, Malago Bay, and Gulf of Cuba. We can see the general behavior or form of the spectral signature for vegetation, the, the, the reflection peaks in the green region and the infrared, and the uh, noise in the signature. This is an issue when we think we study this data in field because in high humidity, the constant cloud, uh, cloud cover, and the uh, well, general uh, wetness in the environment in, in have uh, a very negative influence in the noise that is generated or captured in this image. And so it's a very big challenge to, to make a proper collection of spectral data. Now, the next step uh, going beyond just the characterization of this um, species is how we can analyze or correlate this type of data with different images from observation programs. 
And as for the moment, the best in the inners we count is the planet scout images up to two meters of spatial resolution. It might be not much, but it's um, for the region is the best we currently have. So uh, from the metadata, we characterize the technical re uh, requirements in order to convert or resample field data to the multispectral data, the image uh, that we have. So we uh, that results in having a spectral signature of, of over uh, 400 uh, bands, different bands, spectral bands, to about just four uh, bands, spectral bands. The well, of course the visible and the infrared range. So of course the first thing is that we are going to use a lot of information, and the second thing is that um, we're going to rely even more on the, on the typical regions that characterizes better the the, the vegetation. That is red and red, green and mid infrared. So even so, even with that all uh, loss of spectral information, there are some um, key differences in every one of the of the signature. That might be not uh, let's say sufficient at this level, but um, from an analysis perspective, it can be uh, Promising. So beyond that, we, we have the sample spectral signature. We want to analyze the images. Um, we've been you know, working mainly in this spectral angle mapper is a uh, the most used algorithm for this type of um, exercise. And uh, it relies on the comparison of two in uh, magnitude measurements of reflectance. So from that, um, we compare the spectral signature from the, of course. In, the one we capture and the one we get from the image. And he, if the angle is, is, is closer or is wider, and it has um, a more um, close relationship or a more definitely spectrally speaking. So this is one of the earliest examples from this classifying classification exercise. And of course, we could be a little bit skeptic about um, classification species data, vegetation species data from satellite images. For, uh, for with an image of three, of a special resolution of two meters with only four spectral bands, uh, in relation to field height spectral data. Um, it's very, uh, uh, well, in general, it could be very debated uh, how can we uh, classify it. Uh, information in satellite images at the species level to any type of data, especially since we have the linear spatial and spectral resolution. But we, our focus is not to generate these final thematic maps of the mangrove species, is to explore these spectral relationships and how we can contribute to, to generate this information that is so dearly needed in economics. So well, every, every single one of these pieces in these examples uh, say to us is that uh, the strongest response, the, the strongest signal of the characterized mangrove species is the one that is represented in every single piece. So these pieces, those rough pieces are related to the red mangrove, the sofran mangrove, and so on. That is the what we are being uh, focusing on efforts on, about how we can uh, that correlate this spectral information, not just to generate a, a thematic map, but as to, to better uh, get a deep understanding of these spectral relations. In, in addition to that, uh, for every single uh, expedition, the methods have changed, the algorithm have changed, we have tried different combination of processes, not just from the images, but the statistic analysis, how to generate the end members. And in revaluing results for these in the study areas. This, in particular, the Uramba Malaga Bay National Park was very difficult because of uh, one week of field work in the spectral radiometry um, that was um, taken into, into this expedition uh, was damaged by the second day. So uh, we got very few signatures. But uh, even so, uh, when we and explore this analysis, this processing of the images and the spectral signature. You can see that some parts of the, the pixel distribution values that 
have indeed a, a exact uh, relation, aspect of relation of these two types of data. It might be not too accurate about us. So let's say I'm not saying that all the red pixels are definitely red mangrove, but there is, a, in fact, uh, a relationship that that it is indeed in, there are indeed um, a different aspect of differentiation. Now, the last year was the latest in scientific expedition in the Gulf of Juga, and it's the largest in area we the we have worked so far. And we also have um, a very peculiar results in that are a promising results that we are still waiting to, or, or, may, or that yet we are in, driving to um, validate our results. It is uh, the spectral differentiation. I like to begin um, to focus this also about here of how this stripes are formed. These stripes are related to the uh, distribution of the mango, the succession we, the succession we have. In the different species, right? We expect that in, in terms of soil, in terms of in topography, and to have a, a, a different uh, distribution of the mango species. So uh, it's, a very, it's been a very promising result in that regard because we observe by the riverbank different species, different collection, different configuration. That uh, indeed in, in the classification we have been. Witnessing, witnessing. Now, the challenge here is how to uh, achieve a better, uh, a highly accurate in results from that. In that regard, we, in, we try different methods, as I mentioned, in static boring statistics analysis and in this processing. And uh, we're working probably on that um, yeah, um, in order to finish my presentation. A little bit of a conclusion and recommendation is vital uh, and makes probably most people that uh, work with images the atmospheric correlation is vital. This is uh, a very complex issue because of the, in, in the correction models. It might vary from sensor to sensor. And the yeah. example of the general area, uh, as you can see, is completely clouded. And in we have this led to all, all new challenges in, in this type of data. So, um, in, and that's it. That's it. That's what I wanted to share. Um, well, thank you. Do you have any questions? Thank you very much, Nelson. And thank you for keeping to time.